Welcome back to PGI, where I am joined with a good friend of mine, Mr. Brian Loveless. He is the owner of Minnesota Legend, as well as the middle linebacker. Um, Hall of Famer? Yeah? Not yet. Uh, I'm, okay. I'm, waiting on that, I'm waiting on that call, but not yet. I'm sure it's coming. <laughs> One of the best in the league, definitely. But thank how you, you thank doing? You. I appreciate it. I'm doing great. It's been um, a while since you see me. I, since you see me on your show, I had a lot shorter hair then. Yeah, I love it. I <laughs> yeah. love it, man. But, man, you guys pulled out a legendary win over, at one point, the undefeated Atlanta Swarm. 48 to 20 at that. So, what was the keys to you guys winning that game? Snow. <laughs> no? It's our first... It's, it's our first snow game in franchise history, bringing Atlanta up. Uh, this would have been our eighth straight home win. So don't, I mean, don't come to uh, Northwoods undefeated. <laughs> oh my gosh! So, so I just, so y'all, y'all just uh, the legend, the legendary legend killers when it comes to that. Yeah. <laughs> but no, um, the the coaching staff put in numerous hours trying to figure out what Swole and Mark were doing over there in Atlanta. And uh, we pulled it out. Uh, everything went right for us on off, on def especially on defense. Our defense clicked on all cylinders. The front four, Angela, uh, Mark Mello, Max Knight, Buster Johnson, the, and the secondary for all six of them. Uh, Tigger Clay, Rick Evans, they all – they both had interceptions as our diamond nickelbacks. Uh, Derek, I think – Cody and Johnny. Johnny had a pick six. So it, we hit on all cylinders on defense. So that was a major key to that and not letting Dynasty and BDG go off. That you did. A legendary win from a legendary crew. I wish you guys the best of luck for the rest of the season. I can't wait to see what you do next week. For sure. Please. All right. Thank you. Yep. Cam, Polly, back to you. Welcome back to PGI, where I am joined with, I would say, if not the best O-lineman in the SFL, definitely top two. From Arizona Scorpions, I have here with me Mr. Sean Cricket and Mr. EJ DeQ. How are you both doing today? Good. Doing well, doing well. Yeah, I bet you are for that big win over San Diego. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. So tell me, gentlemen, how important was this win for Arizona, in your opinions? It was big. I know that Eddie was definitely focused on this one. There's a little bit of blood behind the scenes where things are a little itchy. And that, or, you know, I'm sure that factored in. I also know that we are now sitting on top of the standings. So, you know, looking for that first round bye. Yes, we are. Definitely uh, look for that. Um, especially uh, still that, that championship leaves a bad taste in my mouth. So, you know, it, we're ready just to make this happen for us, you know. Okay. So that unfinished business mantra actually does mean that we have unfinished business to take care of. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So what are your thoughts on your your abilities this season? I mean, I am the least sacked quarterback in the league right now. If it wasn't for you guys, you know, I would be throwing a whole lot more interceptions. I would be on my butt a lot. So how important is that for you? I think from being drafted as a lineman, you know, I think it's important because you see the, the improved development from year to year, see the season to season. So, you know, especially – we protect you, and plus, uh, uh, Mr. Moses can run all over the place too. You know, so that's what I enjoy. We had a great running game yes last, yes, just yesterday. So mm -hmm. that that we were balanced. The balance is there. All right, and EJ. Well, you know how important it is to me. 
I was D line until that first game when I came over here and saw you running for your damn life. In which case I said, Eddie, switch my number, give me a different jersey. I will sneak in and I will keep her safe. Cause this ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. It was a it was a heck of a time to start. But thank you, gentlemen, for the sacrifices that you have made. Um, one more question before I before I have you here quickly, because I don't have many I old linemen that I talked to, unfortunately. But um, what are your thoughts on your stats? not being tracked does it bother you does it bother you a little bit or is that even important to you not important to me the stat i look at is how many times you're sacked period yeah it's not a, yeah it's not important i mean you know you know we could say okay un sacks not allowed or sacks given up but that's that's nothing as long as you, you see it on a you see it on a day to day how the whole team is running with it how the old line and the offense is uh clicking that's all that matters to us Awesome. Well, thank you so much for all that you do, the sacrifices you make again. Really appreciate it, gentlemen. And I'm looking forward to uh, talking to you a little bit more later on in the season. All right? Yes, all right. indeed. All right. Y'all have a good one. You too. Cam, right. Polly, back to you. All right. Welcome back to PGI where I am joined with Mr. Ramos Lin. He is the owner and coach of Mexico City Aztecs. They just got their uh, sixth win, fifth in a row, from the Motor City V8s today. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. Um, just very happy with the, um, you know, the success that we were having over the last several weeks. And uh, another complete team win. Indeed. So how has Jordan's sight grown under your leadership? He's been incredible. Um, you know, during this game, he completed like the first 21 passes of the game, something like that. Um, and, and he is doing a great job and being careful with the ball and uh, just being a great leader um, and, and the whole team rallies around him. Indeed. Do you think some of the keys to, to Mexico City's success is your third um, your third down conversion rate, as well as um, your time of possession. For instance, in this game, you held the ball for almost 25 minutes, which is a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, you want to dictate the pace of the game uh, and you want to basically just the whole game rallies up, uh, uh, around what you do, right? Instead of uh, being on the back foot and just being reactive to what the other team does, you want to really dictate the pace of the game convert on those third downs, keep the, the chains moving and do some, you know, 12, 14 play drives, ending up with points. And um, obviously that's incredible when the defense then gets a three and out, for example, that really gives you a whole lot of momentum. Indeed. All right, one more question for you, Ramos. Your next opponent is Fort Worth Toros. It's going to be a really tough matchup between you guys. What do you think will be some of the things that you will be focused on? You know, forwards a very complete football team. Um, I think we have to do pretty much about the same that we are doing with some differences, of course. You know, you, you cannot be just, uh, you know, repetitive every single game. Uh, but I think we have the, the formula for success, uh, not only for, the, for that game, but for football in general, which is put pressure on the quarterback, uh, you know, keep the giveaways to a minimum and uh, also for some takeaways. So, you know, I, I think we've been doing a really good job at those things. And when you can do all those things well, uh, you can pretty much win any ball game. Indeed. Well, Coach, fantastic work on a fantastic team. Looking forward to seeing what you guys do the rest of the season. Thank you, Ashley. You're very welcome. Cam, Polly, back to you. Welcome back to PGI, where I am joined with Mr. Dwayne Schindler. He is the owner, or one of the owners, of the Motor City V8s. Just came off um, loss to the Mexico City Aztecs. Brother, how you doing? I'm doing well. Oh, that's good. It's good to hear, man. Good to hear. Now, with your your, your team right now, it's two and six um, currently. Um, two things I kind of want to cover with this quickly. 
Um, what is the team morale like at this point? Are you still, are you, are you guys still trying to, um, are you guys getting each other, or keeping each other up, uplifted and upbeat about things? Or is it kind of like a jury tone right now? Well, the morale in our locker room, I, it, it's very uh, positive. And I, I think it's just, we have a lot of positive people. Uh, and we've had, we have some people that are very talkative in there that have been w- with us for a while, like Bill Cherry uh, is coming back to us. David Leathers uh, talks a lot. Uh, Sable Can- uh, Cannon, he's he's very much excited with the stuff we're doing. Guy Clausen, he's our morale leader. He's always at, uh, saying good morning, asking everybody how they're doing, uh, asking questions. And uh, Sable is trying to learn about the game as well so he he does a lot of talk that way but i mean just reading the comments in the locker room after this loss uh you know everybody understands uh we're trying some new things here uh there was a free year plan when we're uh, putting this together to see see how it would work uh i don't know you know how moving to a new game is going to affect that but we're still in uh phase two and that we're changing, we're obviously going to change some things around if things aren't working the way they're supposed to. And people are making comments like we're a young team, we're still learning, we're, we're still progressing, we're still uh, working our way up, up the system. So uh, our locker room really is, is fine as far, as far as this go. You know, it, it, we're not happy uh, to be in a, the position that we are. But we're also not out of the playoffs. Our division right now is getting uh, killed. And, I, uh, you know, we've been in most of the games we've lost. Uh, and we've actually uh, put together some pretty solid performances in our wins. Uh, so uh, I think we've, you know, we've got four more games to play. Anything can happen. Uh, the way things will shake out in our division, who knows? Uh mm-hmm. You, you, when you get to this point, you just the pressure's off. You just got uh, to grind through it and do the best you can, have some fun with it, learn some things, and go into the next season. Okay, one more question for you. Um, since you were a coach at one point, I'm wondering why or well, yeah, why did you guys decide to try uh, the three tight end set this season? Well, for the past couple of seasons. Well, that's that's more something that you might want to um, elaborate with Drew. But I, I think the b- basic thing is that we have seen some uh, – we had had some success with two tight end sets. Uh, we had seen um, how uh, some power running uh, could be done with, with uh, that. Uh, and, you know, uh, we, we also thought that – uh, matchups as far as linebackers uh, can be difficult uh, to cover the pass. Uh, linebackers in this game are pretty slow, um, and especially if they're not star linebackers. So, uh, I mean, we the the thing is, and you, you know this because you've done some coaching and and you, you've seen how playbooks uh, go together. Uh, it, it's all a matter of get, finding the right balance. Uh, and if you have a run-heavy kind, uh, run heavy formation, sometimes getting it to pass when you want it to pass is difficult. Um, but uh, Drew thought he saw something there that he could do that could build upon what, what he had done with uh, the free wide receiver sets that, and put people at – in mismatches on defenses against the tight ends. Uh, what, we've, what we've seen is that uh, we're not really, like, uh, shoving the three tight end sets down everybody's throat. I mean, if you look at uh, the touches, about 50% of the catches are going to the wide receivers, 20% are going to the backs, and, you know, the um, uh, about 30% are going to our tight ends. So, a, I, but, you know, we are utilizing uh, uh, all of our weapons on offense that, that way. We, you know, we don't have a fullback 
when I first started in this league, fullbacks were lucky if they got 10 touches a season. Uh, we don't have a fullback who's just sitting there blocking. You know, we don't have, uh, you know, a second tight end who's who's just a blocker. We, we're, we're trying to do some – different things to get everybody involved and, and shuffle it around a little bit. Uh, it's a work in progress and we're just going to keep uh, trying to improve upon it. Or if, you know, I, I don't think you can call it dead yet. I don't think you can say, put it on the scrap heap. Um, uh, I, I think uh, it, it's still uh, something that y- you can work upon. The, the teams that have, uh, use the two tight end sets. Sometimes it takes them a while to do that. Sometimes you switch somebody around to running back from fullback. It takes a while to develop people into those roles. And, you know, starting out with a copper quarterback, you know, um, trying to build that up a little bit, you know, we're we're still trying to develop on it, but uh, we'll see, you know, ultimately if, if, you know, we're going to try to be successful with what we run. And if we think we have to do it some other way, yeah, th- then we'll uh, we'll look at how we can change it around next season. Indeed. Well, I think we shall the best of luck for the rest of the season. And uh, you got a good group of guys over there. So, y'all keep your head up. And uh, Ashley's rooting for you, okay? <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. You're very welcome. Thank you for being on. Cam. Polly, back to you. 